This is True Gloder's Fact Hunt, and this week we're taking a look into society's dirty underbelly, because this time it's all about crime. The earliest known criminal codes date all the way back to the Sumerian civilization in and around modern Iraq in the 24th century BC. Most of those laws don't survive, but a comprehensive list from about 2100 BC does. It's got 57 crimes and specific penalties for each. The code cited the death penalty for murder, robbery, adultery and rape, and fines for everything from getting another man's slaves pregnant to farming his land without his permission. And of course, assault. Weirdly, cutting off a man's nose or foot in a fight gets less of a fine than breaking his arm with a club, which, if you're interested, would get you compensation of 660 grams of silver. Now, we aren't America bashing here, but the land of the free is also the land of the free to commit crime. Approximately 12 million crimes are reported in the US every single year. That's twice any other country. Now, some of those crimes probably shouldn't be crimes at all and are the result of overzealous police or outdated laws. But even so, that's a lot. In fact, alongside the Seychelles, the US has the highest prison population in the world, with 707 of every 100,000 people behind bars. That's roughly the same as most estimates for North Korea. Don't read too much into it, though, because excluding the tiny states of San Marino and Liechtenstein, the country with the smallest prison population of just 19 per 100,000 is the Central African Republic. And we all know how safe that is. But who are these criminals? Well, in the US alone, there are an estimated 1 million gang members. That's 0.3% of the population. In terms of the world's largest employers, that means gangs in the US employ twice as many people as Volkswagen does and are nearly twice as big as the US Postal Service. Between them, though, they're estimated to commit around 80% of all serious crimes in the country, which is pretty good going. That's the gangs, by the way, not the US Postal Service. But it's not just America where gangs are a problem, obviously. The Mexican drug cartels are thought to have over 100,000 soldiers between them. That's roughly the size of the entire military of Canada, whilst the largest gang group, the Hong Kong Triads, likely have over 160,000 members. This is Daniel B. Cooper. Actually, it's not. That's a fake name he gave to a Northwest Orient Airlines check-in desk at Portland Airport on November 24th, 1971. Cooper, smartly dressed and very polite, boarded a Boeing 727 for a 30-minute flight to Seattle, then hijacked it with a bomb in his briefcase. Polite, calm and a generous tipper with the drinks he bought throughout the ordeal, he let the passengers and some crew off at Seattle in exchange for the plane refuelling, four parachutes and $200,000 in used notes. That's about $1.6 million today. Cooper gave precise instructions to the pilots, telling them to fly with the flaps down at the minimum possible speed and altitude. The plane left Seattle bound for Reno with Cooper and the flight crew on board. Half an hour later, the rear door open light flashed in the cockpit, and when the plane landed, Cooper, the cash, and two parachutes were gone. He was never found. However, in February 1980, just under $6,000 of the ransom money was discovered on a riverbank downstream of the plane's flight path. And that's the closest anyone has ever come to finding any of the cash, or the world's most audacious robber. And from the most incredible to the most stupid. In 2008, Charles Ray Fuller, aged 21 from Fort Worth in Texas, walked into a bank and tried to cash a fraudulent check. Nothing unusual there, but how did the bank know it was fraudulent? Well, it was written out for 360 billion dollars. <laughs> which got the bank rather suspicious, unsurprisingly, because that's seven times the amount of fraud committed by Bernard Madoff, and more than 50 times the compensation paid out by Enron. It's twice the GDP of New Zealand. Fuller later claimed his girlfriend's mother had lent him the cash to start a record business. All right, fine, one from the UK then. And British customs officials have got it pretty easy, really. In fact, they can do no wrong. 
at least that you can complain about, because they're protected by an 1876 Act, which says that if you want to complain about a customs officer in Britain, you have to inform them in writing at least a month before you press charges. Whereas the same Act also says you have to press charges within a month of the incident, which means unless you write your complaint and give it to them when you're searched, then complain to the police or your lawyer the same day, they get away with whatever it is they've done wrong. But that's probably not the most unreasonable law, because in Japan, it's illegal to be fat. Honestly, it really is. In 2009, the government passed a law banning any man over 40 from having a waistline of 80 centimeters or larger, and 90 centimeters for women. There's no fine for being overweight, but there is compulsory counselling and motivational support. That is hilarious. And for our American and British audience, 80 centimetres is a 31-inch waist. I'm a 32-inch waist, although that varies from trouser to trouser, which means, officially, I am big in Japan. You've probably heard of forensic pathologists, ballistics experts and DNA profiling, but how about forensic podiatry? Yes, your footprint can tell a lot more about you than just your shoe size, shoe make and which way you are heading. Since being officially recognised as a science in 2007, although it's been around far longer, these guys can tell a lot about you from the marks left by your least sexy body parts. They can tell whether you were walking or running, whether you're right or left footed, whether you're wearing shoes too big or too small for you to try and cover your tracks, how tall you are, your weight, whether that weight is likely to be fat or muscle, whether you've ever suffered any injuries, any extra weight you may have been carrying and whereabouts on your body you were carrying it, and potentially whether you were even anxious or relaxed as you arrived or left the scene. Hell, they can even tell sometimes how you tie your shoelaces, because there might be a million pairs of shoes like yours, but only one bears the marks of who you are. Uh, blue whale fact. Blue whale fact about crime. Uh, well, killing blue whales has been illegal for all nations since 1966, although the USSR carried on until the 70s, by which time less than 1% of the world population remained. Well, that's a bit of a sad fact. Um, OK, how about this? Blue whales couldn't eat a person even if they wanted to because they have filters called baleen plates, which we couldn't fit through. There we go. Fact hunt.